We've got 10 to 15 people in our energy team and we're working on multiple projects, mostly around energy displays, uh, future energy technologies generally, but mostly about devices that inform people about energy use in some way and try and engage people with their energy use. How to encourage people to save energy ultimately. One of our uh, big themes within energy research is on the psychology of how people engage and also interact around energy. So we're not only interested in uh, how people behave, um, but we're interested in why and when and how they behave, what their reactions might be, and possibly unanticipated consequences. Lots of Horizons research is being predicated on this idea that we're all going to have smart meters in the next 10 years. So we're all going to replace our traditional meters, the meters that a meter man comes around and reads, with these internet enabled ones. So the energy companies will be able to read our meters remotely which is great for them because they'll be able to give us accurate bills, they'll be able to reduce some of the cost of the people coming out and reading our meters. But we need to get something from it as well. We wanted in advance to see how it's going to work. For us this was just a test to see if we gave people different types of graphs, different types of visualisations of their data where they could see how to save money. So we did everything from graphs, which are really nice for some people, some people like to see data in that way, to uh, Twitter feeds. So we gave everyone a Twitter feed from their house. The house spoke to them basically and told them you know, how much energy it was using every day. We also had the houses send text messages, so people while they're at work, the house would tell them you know, what happened the previous day. If they switched on a kettle, they'd see their, their charts on the web update instantly, so they could see suddenly how much that kettle was using. People expect very clever things from technology nowadays. And I think we're trying to find this balance between giving people data but letting them make their own decisions about how to change their behaviour. I think it will take longer for people to, say, start challenging their energy companies over their bills, but that's where we're trying to move to. We're trying to make people feel um, like they have enough power over their home and their electricity bills to start challenging the energy companies about things, you know, to start asking for the cheaper tariffs and to start asking them to make sure their bills are accurate. The government is already advising this, but we're not seeing many people take up on that advice because they don't feel like they have enough information to do this. It's what we're trying to do, we're trying to give people power rather than just save them money. My name is James Colley, I'm a PhD research student here at the University of Nottingham. My specific focus is on taking a more person-centric perspective on energy consumption. Traditionally, we look at energy consumption of, of spaces, so buildings like the home, like the workspace, like, like government offices, for example. A progression in that is to look at a person's consumption across an entire day. So as one person moves throughout many spaces, through home, through work, through their social activities even, you, you can build up a holistic picture of their consumption. And my hope is that through that, you can help a person reason about their energy consumption and become more accountable to it. The approach that I take is to, to look at the data that comes from these spaces. In a workspace you might have a building management system which records the, the energy consumption there. In the home you'll have smart meters. And you can take these data sources and combine them together and you can build a map of where they've been through the day and tie this data from each of these spaces into one holistic picture. The progression from this kind of technology is to develop a means by which groups can have control over big spaces like a, like a sports centre or like a meeting space or an office where there's lots of people and the, the consumption there becomes a social issue. My name's Ian Dent, I'm a research student at Horizon. I'm using a technique called uh, data mining which is trying to find interesting patterns in streams of data. In contrast to a lot of the other people in Horizon, I'm looking at what you can find out from the electricity meter data. So rather than looking at the people, I'm looking at how you infer things of what the people are doing from the meter data. The peak of usage in the UK for electricity is early evening. So particularly interested in what people are doing between say 4 and 8 p.m. And that is often you cooking the evening meal. If we can move that peak demand by smoothing when people do different things, then they don't need as so many power stations, we don't generate as so much carbon, and we meet all the legal requirements for climate change. The COAIR project uh, 
is much more focused on workplaces than the home. And it specifically looked at a variety of workplaces, including uh, workplaces in other countries, uh, and trying to look at issues around energy usage and how interactive systems in the future might be used to help workplaces to manage their energy more efficiently. It's about understanding how occupants in larger buildings control the energy use of the building and also just control their working environment. So it's not always about trying to save energy, but about having the optimal conditions for working in. What we wanted to do was get a variety of workplaces first. So we chose two in the UK uh, and one in China. And then within the workplaces, we didn't just want to talk to management. We also wanted to talk to the people who are doing a job of work day to day. And we also wanted to talk to the people who manage the buildings that all this work is taking place in. Because we know that those three groups could have a very different perspective on energy. People design the buildings, they don't necessarily know in detail the needs of the occupants. So they may design the building to be energy efficient, but the actual needs of the people once they're in the building is quite different. In each of the organisations that we work with, representatives of those three groups came together and were given an opportunity of around four hours per workshop to discuss the key issues that they saw around energy so that we could seek to try and find the most interesting issues and the issues that cut across those three groups. In the home, if you're, if you're hot, you might want to open the window, but in the workplace that might not be as easy. So you might not have windows you can open, or they might be locked, so you have to call up the building manager to open the window. He'll then say, oh, you can't do that because that will destroy the heating system. Some of the um, employees who came along to our workshops talked about things that they were um, unhappy with or uncertain about, and the, the management of some of these workplaces were actually genuinely surprised to find out that they were either uncertain about how the building worked or unhappy about certain things. So we found actually just running workshops in organisations seemed to be quite a useful structure to get people talking about things. 